What's going on guys? Welcome to Essential Style. Today we're taking a look at my shoe collection. Let's get right into it. So the first shoe that we're going to look at is Allen Edmonds Park Avenue Cap Toe Oxford. So this is just a basic black cap toe dress shoe. Very, very dressy. This is your interview shoe, your wedding shoe. Anytime you need to look polished and look professional, this is the shoe to go for. This is my first real American-made Goodyear welted dress shoe. It's got a leather sole. I've worn it a couple times. Really not that bad as far as the wear is going on. It's still got the original laces. I keep shoe trees in them. Allen Edmonds, Black, Capto, Oxford, Park Avenue. Gotta get yourself a pair. All right, so the next shoe is probably one of the more versatile style of dress shoes, and that is the Allen Edmonds McAllister Wingtip Oxford in dark chili. Wingtips are one of my favorite designs for a shoe and this shoe in particular just all like the big pronounced brogues on it that's what these little holes are. All this detail I mean especially in this color dark chili really really just a very very nice looking shoe. I really enjoy this shoe. I didn't wear it as much as when I first got it but that changed because I put on my own sole protector. I actually glued this on myself and I probably have to fix it because it's starting to come undone, but no big deal. I got the supplies right in my garage. I can handle them. Probably one of the most versatile shoes you can get. Full brogue, wingtip, and a medium brown like this. You could wear this thing with jeans and an Oxford shirt all the way up to a suit. Maybe not a super dressy suit, but definitely a, you know, pretty good suit. So, Allen Edmonds McAllister wingtip. In keeping with the same company, because... I like Allen Edmonds, they fit my foot good, they're very comfortable, they work for me. My most recent purchase for Allen Edmonds is actually the Allen Edmonds 5th Avenue in Dark Chili. Again, they call Dark Chili this medium brown, kind of like red undertones, and I really think that it's just bright enough to pop. You guys can see I've got a window open back there. You guys can see what it looks like, but it's not so bright that you can't wear it in more formal situations. Reasons for getting this shoe was, like I said, between the black cap toes I just showed you guys and the medium brown wingtips, I kind of didn't have something in between. The wingtips, you can only dress up so much, and then the black cap toe oxfords are really best for super duper formal situations. What if you want to wear something, a brown shoe that's a little bit dressier? Well, that's where this comes in. A lot less detail, they've just got one little brogue right there with those holes, and you know, very minimal, very sleek, stylish, not, nothing too crazy. Pretty simple. I've worn them a couple times already. I was gonna go ahead and glue on my sole protectors on here too, but I'm kinda liking the leather sole. There's something about it. I the only thing is I don't wear these in the rain, because rain will just destroy leather soles. But yeah, Alan Edmonds, Fifth Avenue, Capto Oxford, great shoe. Let's move on. Now here is a shoe that I probably wear most of the time, especially during the summertime, and that is the Clark's Desert Boot. This is my second pair of Clark's Desert Boot. I did a video on this shoe before and just something about the comfort and just the way the foot the shoe moves with your foot it doesn't feel like it's too stiff super comfortable on the bottom it, it just tends to work in all situations between my three dress shoes i just showed you guys in these boots i literally feel like i need to not worry about having a pair of brown casual shoes because this is it if i want to go dressier than this i'll just wear my wingtips that i showed you guys before great shoe very comfortable just the shoe just works guys so I was wearing that shoe quite a bit, and I also recently purchased the same shoe in this color. So you can see this is, they call this a tan leather, but again, very, very similar to that dark chili. Very easy to match with my belt that matches those shoes. I, don't, I only have one. Basically, I wear two belts. I wear a, a blue and white stripe belt, and I wear a leather belt that's about this color. Super easy, super simple. I don't have to think about does this go with this? Does that go with that? I just find for my taste and for what I'm doing, this color tends to work really well. These I got this summer. I wore these with shorts a lot. Something about them looking a little bit more polished just lends itself better for shorts and a little bit more formal wear. Again, these are kind of like an in-between of between the beeswax, Clark's Hudson boots, and the actual dress shoes. If I wanted to wear something a bit dressier, but I was doing something where I didn't want to beat up my dress shoes, then that's where these come in. They just look a little bit more polished than the beeswax. And also I was wearing the beeswax Clark's as boots for like all the time. So I figured it's good to have a second pair just so you can rotate and let the shoe dry out. Definitely check them out. 
I'm sure everyone knows about these though. This next boot is also what I find pretty versatile. Everything I have is, I try to get the most versatile things and just only the most essential things that I can wear in multiple situations. So this one is the Allen Edmonds Higgins Mill casual work style boot. You know, it's like a work style dressy boot. Had these for quite a long time. Got the Day Night Rubber Outsole heel. I actually had these rehealed. So this is pretty worn right here, but I had them rehealed last summer. Last summer. I had them, I had these rehealed last winter and they actually came out really well. Um, it was only like $50 and yeah, I mean, the shoe's been great. Moving along. So now we come into the Allen Edmonds Dalton wingtip boot. And again, dark chili, keep things simple. Can wear it in multiple situations. Funny story with this boot, I ended up having it in walnut and dark chocolate. Uh, but then I sold both of them because I couldn't make up my mind which one I wanted. So I kind of went right in the middle and I got this. Pretty comfortable shoe. Got the double leather outsole. This sole is super comfortable. Super, super comfortable. Another great boot. I'm excited to wear this. I probably will put on a sole protector this year on this boot because it's kind of silly to say, oh, it's raining. I can't wear my boots. I got to wear my sneakers. I just think that is, that sounds kind of silly. So we got the yellow bean duck boots still going strong. Didn't really wear these that much this summer. I actually wore them recently going camping. You can see they're pretty dirty. I have yet to clean them up because I don't care. <laughs> and then we also have the classic Vans old school, really comfortable shoe. I wore these yesterday when I went for a bike ride on my casual bike, on my fixed gear bike. Really good outsole, very minimal, No, not, not much support, not much cushioning like I said in the video for these, but still rocking these, still enjoying them. Then we also have the same shoe in that multicolor blue. I really enjoy this shoe. It's just something kind of different if I want to change it up. For example, today I'm wearing khakis. If I was wearing khakis and a white Oxford shirt, I think these would look really awesome. So nice shoe. And here's a shoe that I haven't really talked about, and that is the Adidas Ultra Boost 2020 model. And I looked at this shoe for a long time. I wasn't really sure about it, but I really don't have any sort of comfort shoes where if I wanted to go walk the dog at night or if I just wanted to actually just walk up to the grocery store, which is about well, half a mile from my house and then walk back, which I do sometimes. I either had to wear my dress shoes, my desert boots. I couldn't just slip on a pair and go. So I ended up taking the plunge and getting these. I do like them. I do get a little bit of a heel slip in them, but they're very comfortable. I thought I was going to wear them for work, but... I just don't like wearing sneakers for work. It just doesn't make me feel like I'm really dressed properly. But nonetheless, great shoe, very comfortable. I especially like that I could just leave them tied loose and slip them on and slip them off. I don't have any slip on shoes as you guys probably noticed. Everything I have has laces. A good backup shoe just in case my feet are hurting me and I wanna wear something that doesn't look too gaudy or too crazy. And then we've got the pool shoe, the beach shoe, that is the Reef flip-flops. I had a pair of these in brown. My mom got me these for my birthday in blue and I actually think blue is a better choice of color footwear for the summertime. Enjoy these when I wear them. I wear them around the house. I don't really go out in public with these unless I'm at the beach or I'm at the pool somewhere but good shoe. Next up are the cold weather in-house shoes that are the slippers. I used to have a pair of these in light tan. I like the brown a little bit better. They're by L.O. Bean. I think they're the wicked good slippers. Really comfortable. It, it just, again, I think I've mentioned before in some of my videos, my feet tend to like this super duper flexy glorified sock type thing. One thing I don't like about these shoes is the laces constantly come undone. And, I, and you can see I kind of just <laughs> try braiding them just because I got tired of it. Maybe I'll just, uh, I'll figure something out. But good shoe nonetheless. And last but not least, we have a totally different pair of shoes altogether. And that is going to be the Giro Empire cycling shoe. Again, lace-ups. I told you guys just about everything I have is in lace-ups, including my cycling shoes. We got a two-bolt cleat right there, mountain bike style. I got a little odor eater in there because these things smell, especially in the summertime. They did come with the high visibility laces. I swap them around sometimes, but then I just put these in. I think the, the black just looks a little bit nicer. I can wear them in casual situations if I want, and I still have this on the side. And the cool thing about this is you've got this little latch right here just to tuck your laces in because not a good thing to be riding a road bike and then have your laces get caught in your chain 
20 miles an hour, you're going down. But overall, great shoe, very stiff, very comfortable for cycling, even comfortable for walking, really. Um, you know, it's, I'm pretty happy with them. So that's pretty much it. Those are my shoes. I'm pretty sure I have like 12 or 13 in total, something around there. A few years ago, I had about 30 pairs of shoes. And I remember one thing that just drove me crazy was I would have shoes all over my area. And it just, I don't like have, living in a crazy, messy area. And once I started to pare down my shoes and go with on, what's only essential, I found that it was a lot easier to keep everything clean. And it was also a bit easier to just coordinate your outfits. You don't have to worry about, do I wear this? Do I wear that? Do I, what do I do? You probably, probably noticed that I don't have the Vans slip-ons anymore. I don't have the Red Wing Heritage Chuckas anymore. No more Zero Grands, no more black shoes. Um, I really got rid of a lot. I don't really keep things if I don't get good value from them. I'm not really a minimalist, but I do follow minimalism and I try to take elements of that and bring them into my life because I find it works for me. But however, a true minimalist would have like one pair of Clark's Desert Boots. They wouldn't have the Desert Boots in, you know, two different colors. They would just say, well, I'm gonna wear one and then just keep, just replace it when it's gone. Well, I prefer a little bit of variety. Same thing, a true minimalist pipe wouldn't have these two. They might not even have brown shoes at all, maybe just black. So that's not me. I like to have a little bit of variety, but just enough variety that I don't have an excess amount of stuff. What I have, I like. You probably noticed, like I said, I don't have any penny loafers. Not a big fan of them. No bit loafers. No double monk straps. I tried those. Wasn't too crazy about them. I don't really find them essential for my style. Get it? Essential style. And um, I had a second pair of cycling shoes, my first pair, but like I said, I got rid of them. There's no reason to have more than one. A couple of the shoes I'm looking at would be the Allen Edmonds Strand and Walnut. I, I look at that shoe like I don't know, once or twice a year. I always decide against it because I'm not sure how it's gonna, how I'm gonna be able to wear it. I think I can, it's not really a crazy dressy shoe. It's kind of hard to wear that lighter color. Another shoe I'm looking at too is the Red Wing Iron Ranger, which I had before, but I had it in a much smaller size and that was when I had like 30 or 40 pairs of shoes. But guys, that's it. Thanks so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. Hope I gave you some ideas. You don't need to have a lot of stuff to be stylish. If you only buy 12 or 14 pairs of shoes, you can just get higher quality things. You'll enjoy it a lot more. Hope I helped. Like this video if you liked it. Give it a thumbs down if you didn't. Subscribe if you want to. And catch you guys in the next one. Thanks for watching.